What is going on, everyone? I hope you all had a good weekend. Today we are going to be doing sort of a rumor roundup and discussing everything we know so far about the second generation Ryzen processors from AMD, which is going to be a follow-up to the ones that released last year. And we already know that they are boasting some pretty impressive specs, talking about 32 core, 64 threads, which is doubling their top end SKU, which released last year to much praise by many content creators out there. I've had a chance to test one and use it myself, and it was incredible for doing what I do on a daily basis with editing out video. So certainly very excited for the 32 core 64 thread this time around. So we're going to get into everything here. But first, today's video is brought to you by 0n9.com, where you could save money on PC games for all of your favorite platforms like Steam, Origin, Uplay, GOG, and more, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro, which you can get for just $16, and Microsoft Office 2016 Pro, which you can get for just $33. And if you enter my code JOKERW at checkout, you could save an additional 22% off of Windows 10, and you could save 10% off by using the code JOKERS, for the entire website. Be sure to check out the link down in the description below. Now, really the big things everyone wants to know right now is what is the price, what is the release date, what is the specs, and thanks to a few rumors, we actually have all of that information right now from some pretty reliable sources. So we're gonna start off with the specs. This is the latest rumor which just hit uh, earlier this morning actually, courtesy of hwbot.org, which has listings for processors, graphics cards, benchmarks, everything. Pretty reliable source when it comes to stuff like this. And on previous generations, we've usually seen these specs get leaked over there before they're actually officially announced from AMD. Now, I had already mentioned 32 core 64 threads. That is public information. AMD has made that available to us. However, we didn't really know clock speeds yet. We didn't know TDPs and all the different SKUs available. And now we do, we can kind of compare that to the last generation. So as you can see, we've got three new SKUs here for Threadripper. We've got the 2950X, which is going to be a 16 core, much just like, much like the 1950X which came out last year. We've also got the 2970X, which is gonna be 24 cores, 48 threads. And then we've got the 2990X. That's the big guy right there. And that is going to be 32 cores, 64 threads. Now there are a couple of interesting things worth noting here. Um, let's start with the 2950X, which is the successor to the 1950X. One, the first thing that, I, that really stood out to me is that it's actually 300 megahertz slower in its base clock speed. We don't have the turbo frequencies yet, for any of the new processors, but the base frequency is gonna be 300 megahertz slower than the 1950X, and it's also listing a lower TDP of 125 watts compared to 180 watts, which is likely contributed to the fact that it is running 300 megahertz slower. Even though they're running on 12 nanometer plus, it's kind of an odd one seeing the frequency drop down there. Maybe that's just the way they're planning on segmenting it a little bit more this time around but I'm assuming if this thing is running up at 3.4 and especially if you overclock it up to like four gigahertz plus, we're probably gonna see that TDP come up considerably. Now we've also got the 24 core Threadripper 2970X. There was no 24 core last time, except for I believe they might've had them on the Epic server CPUs, but not on the Threadripper. So that's saying it's gonna be 3.5 gigahertz base clock and then 180 watt TDP. And then the big guy, the one that is most interesting to me, the 2990X, that is saying it's going to have a 250 watt TDP and running at 3.4 gigahertz base. And I'm really hoping to see those running at 4 gigahertz and upward on a really good stable overclock. And with a 250 watt TDP for that base clock, you can imagine that's going to be creeping up to 300 watts plus once you start overclocking it. And that is going to need a pretty decent water cooler. I, I would have to imagine these things are going to be a little bit difficult to overclock stable running off of an air cooler. So we'll just have to wait and see once they come out. They did show off some air coolers at Computex and they are pretty darn beefy as this is a beefy CPU. It's a beefy socket and uh, where's the beef? I don't know. All right. So we've got the specs there now. We can kind of look at those. Let's move on to pricing. Now over the weekend, Canada Computers actually listed the Threadripper 2990X, the 32 core, over on their website, which is a Canadian website, and they have it listed over there for 2,399 Canadian dollars. That's not American dollars, so we do have to do a little bit of conversion there, and it comes out to about $1,850. So that could be the price we might expect to see the 32 core 
launching at, which would make some sense. Some earlier rumors had said around 1500 but Canada does pay a little bit more for their stuff, so it might not be a one-to-one -one conversion. So definitely something worth noting there. But between $1,500 and $1,800 is probably a reasonable expectation for these processors from AMD. When the 16-core last year released, it was $1,000. You can actually find those now over on Amazon. I'll have a link below to this if you want to go check it out. They have the 16 cores for $775, and that has a higher base fr frequency than versus the newer 2950X. So, um, might make it a really good buy even when the new processors come out, as these things can overclock regularly to 3.9 to 4.1 gigahertz. That's really on the high end for a really cherry CPU. But 3.94 gigahertz is pretty standard for the Threadripper 1950X. And as I said, I used one of them earlier this year for a couple of months on a system that I was sent out to test out from AVA Direct. And it was just a monster. Seeing that thing light up all 32 threads working away on rendering out a 4K video was just amazing. Uh, right now I'm using an 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 2700X in my render system, so really hoping to see these uh, the new processors come out, and uh, hopefully, hopefully AMD wants to send me one. Fingers crossed on that. I didn't get Threadripper last year, but I've been sent all the other Ryzen processors, so really hoping uh, to get one this time around, AMD. Please, I love you long time. All right, now release date. That's obviously something people want to know as well. The latest rumor, which was originally posted over on Benchlife, which is a Chinese website, is stating that it's going to be releasing on August 13th. So that's less than two weeks away from today. So that's really, really soon. And the rumors are initially, or were staying August, we thought we were going to be coming in August. And they said it's going to be specifically August 13th, which is very, very soon. So that just might be the case, in which case we'll have a lot more information coming up in the very near future, which, of course, I will keep you guys all posted on. And I do have one more bonus story that I wanted to share with you. This is not directly Threadripper related, but it is definitely Ryzen related. Um, th th I just saw this before I started doing the video, and I thought it was interesting enough to at least want to share it with you guys. I do actually want to do some of my own personal testing with it on my render system and try it out and maybe we'll do a dedicated video covering this in the very near future. But if you go over on Guru3D right now, someone has actually posted up a DRAM calculator. So if you use this, it can actually help you. It'll identify your memory and then it will help you figure out what timings are best to use with your set of RAM so that you can have it at a stable clock speed, stable frequency, if you would, for your system memory, which if you are familiar at all with Ryzen and how that all works, memory speed is king when it comes to the Infinity Fabric, especially when you've got something like Threadripper where it's got multiple dies all communicating with each other uh, all in the same package. So having fast, not only just fast RAM, but having stable timings as well is crucial. And in some cases, having those stable and higher frequencies on your system memory can even be more important than having a higher clock speed on the CPU itself. So really finding that good balance is crucial and messing around with memory timings is a little bit more finicky when it comes compared to just overclocking a CPU. Overclocking CPUs is pretty straightforward, but when it comes to memory timings, a lot of people are kind of, you know, a little weird about getting there and messing around with it. So I would be curious to try this out and, you know, put it up against my own memory timings that I have stable on my on my render system compared to, you know, what they give me and see if, you know, if it makes any difference, any improvements whatsoever. And maybe also compare it to just the basic XMP profile that comes with the, with the memory when you slot it in. You can set it in the BIOS, set your XMP, and you're good to go. So I would definitely love to see a comparison between XMP, uh, base clock, and then maybe also my manual t uh, timings and based off of what the DRAM calculator uh, can give you. So let me know if you're interested in seeing that content here in the near very near future. Um, I'll, I'll have links to all the stories down below in a one, t one tab link as well as over to this here over on Guru3D where you can go ahead and download it. Uh, if you're running a Ryzen processor, so you, you can download it. It's not going to you know cost you anything or really mess anything up in your system. It's just a calculator to let you know what kind of adjustments you could make in your BIOS if you decided to. So a very interesting tool, especially for maybe a novice memory overclocker. So be sure to go ahead and check that out as well as links to any of our other sources. But I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week as you'll be, see you'll be seeing me throughout the week periodically on some more content. Might have a stream coming up later in the week as well. So I will see you all for that content. If you enjoyed this video though, don't forget to stick a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. If you have been here for a while, Ring the notification bell, that way you never miss a moment of content, tech news, hardware reviews, and other things. 
as they go live on the channel. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Tara.